Hello, my name is Guy and we are looking at Dungeon Fog and in particular making the tavern in our Dungeon Fog. Now, if you recall, we have made the general store. I'm going to zoom in here so we can have a look around. We made the general store in last week's video. Now we're going to be making this tavern as outlined above. And the tavern in a, in a, in a village, in a city, is arguably the most important space in our medieval setting, in our fantasy setting because it's going to do so many things that our players are going to interact with so I think it's really worth worth spending a little bit of time translating this into something that really does work now I've started to do that already in Dungeon Fog and this is the result that I have managed to come up with I have tweaked it a little bit and uh, let me just show you all so there we go there is our layout of our tavern we obviously have the main tavern itself we've got some rooms we've got some side rooms and then we've got the stables for where the horses will be placed now um, people were saying that the videos are too long beforehand so I thought well let me show you the part of the tavern that I think is fairly important for us to look at as map creators rather than creating the actual tavern itself generally taverns function or have three or four functions that our piece are going to use them for one they are going to be a place where our PCs can possibly gain adventures meet people to start adventures or on an adventure and they go to the tavern two it is actually a place of food and nourishment so they can get that at the tavern usually uh, three they're going to spend the night they're going to stay there for some time so we're going to be looking at building the upper level the barracks uh, section if you like of the tavern itself there are a few things we need to just build in there to to make our narrative lives a lot easier um they may also eventually end up owning a tavern. I've had so many PCs who, who have taken control of taverns and things. So there are many, many, many things that our tavern can do and there are things that we should add to it. Um, something that I want to point out is in the garden um, of, the ta of the tavern, we've got a vegetable patch here with a scarecrow in it. Um, we've got some geese, excellent watchdogs, the best watchdogs you can get, actually. They're incredibly vigilant. They make a terrific noise if anyone starts to come anywhere near them. And they've got some rabbits as well for rabbit stew which I think could be quite nice so these are the stairs going up and that is what we're going to be doing today in terms of designing our tavern I would suggest that you have dungeon fog open with you and you start going through it now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off our lights so there's the map without the lighting effect applied it just makes uh, dungeon fog run a little bit uh, faster on on, on systems uh, and that's what we are here today to look at okay so we're going to go to our layer control. I'm going to turn off lighting. We don't need that anymore. We're going to create a new layer. Uh, let me rename this one first. Ground floor. There we are. Uh, ground floor. And this is going to be our second floor. Now, something that I'm also not going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to do the basement. The basements, generally speaking, are going to be fairly stock standard here. We've got two entranceways, one in the kitchen. Uh, let's just go down to this map. One in the kitchen and one at the bar counter, which I just use tables to, to, to make if you're wondering where that shape came from. Um, the hatches lead down into fairly large cellars basically cold meats for the kitchen and beer and and vats and kegs and things for the bar itself nothing majorly exciting going on down there if you want to add in a cave system a secret temple to a dark god absolutely but those are very specific i think maps we are talking here a generic map that you could use for almost any tavern and this is a fairly standard layout so we're going to do the upper floor now Let's just hop over to the upper floor. We've got that ghosting happening so we can see roughly where we are. And um, I'm going to use wood for the walls, not mud for the walls. We will use wood as well. So the floor and walls are basically all wood. And it doesn't really matter too much the type of wood that we use for the walls. Um, you generally won't really see it unless your players are being particularly scrupulous. All right, so we're going to plot out our tavern here. Now, one of the things that we did in the original map was the tavern seems to have two layers to it. So I, that's how I'm going to build this, this particular tavern as well. We're going to do this, just pop that over there, and then I'm going to bring out this side as well in that shape again a very specific choice uh, of action there and the reason why I wanted to do that was 
basically, I'm going to get rid of that so we can see what we're doing. Um, the reason why I chose to do that is that I want to, to have the capacity for the players to have their own space. So the players are going to have their own space, and that means private rooms. No, that's too big. Let's do that. Okay, fantastic. Now, this private space... I'm going to have Waldorf here, so you can spend extra coin if you so choose to 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 gain access to this space. Now add some stairs going up first, or these in this case it's stairs going down. These stairs sit here, unless I'm greatly mistaken. So, uh, but they go this way around. As long as we know those stairs going up and down. All right, so there's our stairs. Let's just double check that. Let's go to our layers. Yep, stairs are in the right place. Okay, so now we can now we can move forward. I usually like to drop in doors and things straight away, uh, as well as to to finish off the walls, I should say. So these stairs are going to come up. I realise the stairs are facing the wrong way. <laughs> They're going to come up into a wall. So no, 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 no. We don't want to shrink it down. We want to rotate it around. So you come up the stairs. Almost invariably, there is always the the corridor that one one will present to the PCs. So we're going to have a corridor that runs down this way, and we're going to have a corridor that runs that way. So this is a bit of a landing uh, space that we 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 have to work with. And I uh, think we're going to do. Let's see. Let's do. That's a very wide corridor, but you know what? I think it's worth it. So I'm going to do this where I've run along the line and then I've come back on it to so create an internal wall. I don't need to create separate rooms here. I'm not too too fussed by that. What I will do is then just compartmentalize these as as best makes sense, I suppose you could say. And like I said, this is a tavern for for our players more than anything else. It might have been better just to have a long corridor running through, but where we put the stairs was was fairly important uh, for the tavern below, so you're coming up those stairs. So we do, we could, I suppose, compartmentalize even more. What I do like about this particular way of building these walls is that I can grab one of these walls and just move it over. So we can play around with, with the space that we have these are going to be very narrow little rooms, but you pay what sh for what you get. And in this case, you're not paying very much. So can you really afford to be that picky? I don't know. I don't think so. Not, not, not if you want uh, ale that hasn't been sort of spat in, I suppose. Uh, can I move that there? No, it doesn't want me to. I can move the whole thing, but I don't want to do that. Sometimes going back on a line does not make your life easy. So then just delete it. <laughs> just delete it. That's what I say. Just make the problem go away by getting rid of it. All right. So there are three fairly neutral length rooms. I'm going to come back here and just play this shape out again. There we are. So we've got our landing. We've got three fairly neutral rooms plus then the, the actual rooms themselves. Are we happy with that shape? Do we want to drop it down maybe? Make them all the same size? I think it feels better that way. Very small rooms. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. So we've got that happening there. And then that's, this space is going to get left open. All right. Throw in some windows quickly. Well, let's put in doors. So if you hire that room, you get two rooms. This is the expensive room. The royal room, they might call it. Uh, they might also do this, just while I'm, I'm thinking about it. They might also do this because this is above their bedroom. So if you've got people who've paid a huge amount of money, they're less likely to make a noise. At least that would be my thinking if I was a, 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 a tavern owner. Uh, each room gets a window. Now it's important. Now we're talking about designing a tavern space specifically for our players. 
And the important thing is windows. Windows allow thieves to break in. I know it sounds crazy, but it's about facilitating our, our players' actions and breaking in is something that they most definitely, definitely will do. So we've got to keep that in mind. Um, I'm just going to throw in some windows here. Windows are expensive. We've covered, covered spoke about them last time, but they, they can be expensive. So we're not going to have too many uh, in here. This room would also be quite expensive. So we've got one, two, three, four, five speciality rooms, or five rooms, I should say, and then we've got this big space. Now, this big space is actually going to be a common room as well for people to sleep in, uh, or I suppose could be booked off by the players as a private dining room if necessary. Now, what I have not done, I forgot to do, is we're going to go with roofs and to indicate that this is the second floor we use these green shingles i think on the map so we're going to continue to use those uh we're just going to build out i suppose our roof um structure which would stick all the way out there and i'm just going to select it i'm happy with the size of the roof tile i'm not happy with the fact that it has a wall around it. I don't like that, so I'm going to do that. Now, we've just got to go to our, our stacking again and just take this room and drag it down to the bottom so that the windows sit out on top of it, which makes it look a little bit better, uh, in, in my opinion. So there we are. All right, so now we've got that roof sticking out there, and whilst we were at it, we probably should have done the little roof that will stick out here. Now, I know what I said about giving access to rooms and things um, for our, our players so they can sneak in and, and do the, the, the dastardly deeds that they do. Uh, we do need to do that. Sometimes, though, you can make it a little bit more difficult, so they have to make a little bit of a jump or a leap. Maybe the window, they want to get into this window here, so they've kind of got to go that way or, or not. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, the little gap there is, is purposely to make them jump. You can probably extend it if you if you prefer. All right, um, the rest of the structures don't need uh, too much detail on them. They're not going to be double floor, double storied uh, necessarily. You can choose to to do so if you want to. Um, it's 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 your call. Uh, no, I didn't. Did I did I did I select that? What a silly person I am. I thought I was making a new structure. So this was wooden parquet? No, it wasn't wooden parquet. Old parquet. Must be old parquet. There we go. It was old parquet. Fantastic. Um, I thought I was making a new structure. Silly me. Right. I'm just going to quickly put some thatch onto the stables. And it's about deciding what, what type of, of stable structure would the stables have? Would they have a pitched roof? I almost can imagine them having a pitched roof um, rather than than um, than not. So I'm going to press shift here so that I can select half a square and again shift there to to create that space and click there back along here back to there. I'm looking for that orange line. You might not be able to see it, but I needed to do that so that when I select these and make these zero, my roofing sits together, but we want it to be a pitched roof. So the flow, the angle, the rotation, if you like, we can now set independently. So I'm going to make this 90. Let's see. No, that's the wrong way. So uh, one uh, 270 is the other angle. 270 is not going in the right direction. Come over to this one, same thing. This one I'm going to now change to 90 um, because we know that 90 now works better. Is it, was it 90? I didn't press the enter button. Very irritating that keeps popping out like that. Okay, and then I'm going to change the scaling down. I think 200 will work better. Yeah, definitely works better. 200, same with you. 200, enter. 
Okay, so that kind of gives us a bit of a pitched roof like feel. If we want to, we can do another shape that sits right slap bang in the middle of it using our shape tool. Um, it would probably be made out of wood, I would imagine. It's entirely up to you as to how long you want to spend making the 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 shape, I suppose, um, of of these these maps. I mean, are you using them um, commercially? Are you using them for for um, your own private game at home? Do you think that your players really care about the detailing that you're putting in? Um, you know how far do you want to take it, and and I think the answer is is entirely up to you. If this is something that you think is is worth doing, go ahead and do it. If it's something that isn't, well, uh, don't. I do it because I like good looking maps. So I'm going to leave that for now. So that's my that's my my roof over there. I'm going to finish off those, but that's not going to be part of the stream. The idea of putting roofs in, though, is that, that you've got a second floor. It's nice sometimes for the players to be able to see. Aha, so I could jump from there. That's a 15-foot jump. Okay, great. I can do that. I can get down from this side. I can run from that side, etc., etc. So putting them in, I think, is, is often oftentimes quite nice. Back here, we're going to fill up some space. Um, like I said, we've got this roof for the players to be able to run down. Um, the space is going to get filled up with something very, very simple. We're not going to, to over-decorate. And the reason we're not going to over-decorate, by the way, is twofold. One is that um, this is where there is the greatest chance of the players uh, having a combat. Is, is here. Oftentimes assassins will strike whilst they are in, in the tavern, uh, you know, at night the assassins will attack um, or uh, thieves will try and break in, How, however you want to play it out. But oftentimes this is this is the moment, this is the place where it will happen. If you want the space to be a, a, a common space, we could fit in a whole lot of beds in here, which is really nice for the innkeeper. It means that they can they can really house more people. These could be bunk beds, so it's two per room. Uh, I don't see that as being an issue either. Um, I think what I'm going to do up here, just for a little bit of variation though, and this is something to bear in mind, uh, Oftentimes what would make sense doesn't necessarily translate. So I'm going to put two tables up here um, and I'm going to basically say that this is extra extra tables for overflow and for a private sort of dining experience. Listen to that. That's a high a high class cell. If ever there was one, a private dining experience. A uh, bit of a pain in the royal posterior if you are the the poor chef who has to make these these things. I'm putting carpets down in the exclusive rooms, uh, and 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 you know I would play it like that as well. By the way, I would I would make the landlords call it their exclusive space, uh, their their um, you know guest bedroom with with. Wait for it. I'm going to put this in now with ensuite plumbing, a water barrel in the corner that's freshly refilled just for you. And then because players like to do this, I'm going to go to the Victorian uh, stuff. Uh, they've got nicer looking chests. The pl players always like to go and rob, rob rooms of stuff. So in private chambers, you might have a chest there in, in, in these more... Um, more or less exclusive rooms, I should say. You probably have a chest at the foot of each bed so that you can lock away your valuables whilst you go off. I will sort these carpets out, don't worry. I'm going to put a chest in between each of the beds just so we can and then pop back to fantasy and put in um, a pot into each chamber. These are quite literally chamber pots. Uh, it might you might kind of go oh I don't need to add in that kind of detail I don't know I I always contend that if you can make the map feel as if it is a real space it helps with immersion it helps with with getting the players to to really buy into that space that's my my contention um, 
I suppose I should do a meme and say change my opinion, but uh, for me it works. Especially when you've got these very pretty maps and you've spent so much time doing it, you might as well make it feel as if as if it is a real a real space. Um, fresh linen and toweling there, and if you do want a bath, you just ask the serving wench Molly, and she will bring you a bath. Uh, she'll, she'll, well, you can have one outside, or if you want a luxury bath, you've got to tell us beforehand, quite some time beforehand, if you please, and uh, we will we will organise a bath where they bring the bathtub up to 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 wherever you might be. Uh, right, so we're just going to come in here and just move these out of the way before I forget. Uh, round carpet all the way down to the bottom, if you please. Round carpet all the way down to the bottom. There we are. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the colour of these carpets too. These carpets are very bright, very brightly coloured. So we'll have the blue room. Um, and blue is not a terribly difficult colour to manufacture in the, in the olden olden days it's difficult but it's not impossible and the bed sheets are going to match as well because this is the fancy remember this is the fancy uh, minus 89 this is the fancy um tavern remember uh, that our players are going to be buying this is the dying swan so the blue room um put them in the blue room margo put them in the blue room all right so i'm going to turn the lighting effect back on and we can start to populate the lights the light sources. I like to come in here and change the lights. So I make these, I think I make them 200 and I drop these down to 50 so that they're not so overpowering but they definitely give you a sense of lighting having taken place. This is the lighting, sort of standard lighting. So there's always going to be candles sort of pottering around and, and doing whatever it is that they need to do. The bedroom chambers and things would all have a little lent, a little hooded lamp or a, a candle that they would take with them. They do have candles. Let me grab those quickly. Uh, just so we can sort of say that they are there. Here we go, old candles. So they might have an old candle, let's say, there. And there, just for, for extra illumination, they definitely have one up there. This room, this room, this room, you'd probably have to take out one in with you, and then they'd probably put a candle there as well. Okay, so that makes it quite nice and cosy. We don't need anything down there. Like I said, I'm going to just pop a roof onto this one very quickly. We've got uh, thatch loaded up. I need to press shift again so I can join in here. And there, and there, and there and close up the gap, knock out its teeth down to zero and zero. And, I th you know, again, when, we, when we're talking about designing taverns and, and inns and things, the idea is that you want it to feel like it's a, a comfortable, safe space. Generally speaking, you want the players to go, OK, we can stop off here. This is a space where where we can sleep in relative comfort without worrying too much about our gear going stolen. And I always advocate that the tavern should be a space that is is warm and inviting. No, not 100, 200. Warm and inviting, but you know, there's always a risk. There's always potential of of attackers coming in at night and 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 stealing the players' goods and things. I would have that happen very rarely. I would make the tavern a sanctuary, a space where they can get together. Now, when we talk about designing for players, the critical thing here is that the players have their private room, and I very specifically designed the private room at the end of the corridor because. They will hear the bandits or the town guard or whatever the, the, the noise might be. They will hear them coming up the stairs. They have one door which they can bolt and lock off, which I think is a good thing. It prevents the, 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 them from being overwhelmed. But more importantly, they've got three exits. They've got windows on three sides so they can leap out into the vegetable patch, into the main road down there, or onto the roof here and then sort of run along and jump in through here. So there's lots of options for them to, to get away. More importantly is if the guards are in the courtyard down here, 
or have come in underneath this roof, the players will get away unseen. I'm not advocating that the players should always be on the run, but this does allow them that leeway of being able to, to actually think about being on the run and to escape. Whereas if they're in one of these rooms, yes, they've got one entrance port and they've only got one exit. Again, that's not too much of a problem, but it is, it's, it's useful if they go into this sort of side room. What's important to remember when you are dealing with a tavern, I must save, when you are dealing with a tavern, is to have your prices on hand. Don't make the mistake of not knowing how much it costs. My rule of thumb generally is that it's five silver a night per person. And that five silver gets you into the blue room of the Dying Swan. Um, so if there's four people, it's, you know, two gold a night for all four of you. If you increase that by an additional two silver each, that will get you one hot meal. Uh, whether it's a dinner or a breakfast is your choice. So then you add on another two silver and that gets you beer for the night because who really wants to keep track of how many beers the characters have drunk? And then if you add on a silver, that gets you a hot bath in the, in the evening um, with the curtains drawn around it. So if you spend a gold a night, you get our luxury service. If you prefer, you can sleep in the hay loft or the hay barn, which is at the back there, and that's five copper a night to sleep there, no meals included. But you do have access to the rain barrels, which I realize I've just put roofing over. <laughs> They're not going to gather a huge amount of money, uh, money, a huge amount of water. One thing I did want to show you before I end off this video is if we go back to the ground floor, I'm going to turn off ghosting so we don't see that anymore, is the hearth that I use, the mantle they call it. It comes with a built-in chimney. Now, what you normally do is you would place the chimney as I, or the mantle as I have in this room. But because of Dungeon Fog's way of cutting off rooms, um, objects outside of rooms, which is a very good and very useful property, what you have to do is you have to put the prop down twice, once inside the room and then once outside the room, and you'll notice that I'm just stacking it underneath so that I still get this wonderful stone mantle, uh, the chimney outside and the fireplace inside. Again, it's just for the players if they want to sneak in through the chimney, they now have a chimney that they can actually see on the map that's available to them. Something else that I have done, which I think is useful to share, is in this corner I've built a stage. It's just a shape uh, that I have added with a different wooden texture on it. And the reason why I've put this stage here is because oftentimes money, uh, or raising money anyway, is something that the players can do in a tavern type environment. And I think it's important to allow them to raise money by performing if they're a bard or if they're a magician and they do magic tricks. Give them a couple copper for the night. Let the tavern owner say, all right, well, you can spend a night free on the house. Off you go. Uh, give them something along those lines to, to reward them. And by adding in the stage, it can prompt players to go, oh, there's a stage. Oh, I can, I can go and perform. So that's the functions of a tavern, in my opinion, is to provide a space, whether they've got lots of money or little money, so they can go and sleep in the hayloft or sleep in the blue room. Uh, give them a space where they have plenty of escape options, plenty of escape routes. This room itself has got one, two, three, four exits out of it, as well as the windows themselves. Play give them a place for horses so they can go and steal horses if they need to. Give the stable yards, uh, stable boys somewhere to sleep so that there's a sense that this is a working space and you are resolved. So that is, in a nutshell, how I build taverns. And I didn't talk for that long. It was still a long time, but I tried to reduce it down. Do you prefer these videos to be shorter? What I hope is that you have Dungeon Fog open whilst I'm talking and that you're building your own maps as we go along so that you can end up with this village, which is our ultimate goal. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of map making.